What's up, world? Welcome to the Positive Truth, uplifting and positive news for a more progressive society. Tim, what are we trying to bring? Here at the Positive Truth, we're trying to bring awareness, empowerment, inspiration, optimism, and understanding to communities everywhere. So we got Skype to work, Tim. We did. We had some technical difficulties out there, guys. We had no idea Skype updated, and when we're trying to talk to each other, JP could hear me. I couldn't hear him. We could see each other. It was just, it was all kind of backwards. We didn't know what to do. But thankfully, JP had an idea. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so we both Googled it. We both updated on both ends, and we're good to go. Tim made fun of me for having my shirt off. Yeah, okay. man, he, he definitely, uh, that, that video surprised me, man. I didn't expect to see you butt naked, man. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I got out of gym shorts, man. <laughs> All I saw was JP and his, and his shirt off. I didn't know what to do. I was like, ah. I know I'm hideous, Tim, but you ain't got to crack jokes about it, man. Man, I thought it was like one of those accidental videos or something. I didn't know what was going on, JP. Who knows what to expect? <laughs> Oh, man. You know what you we did do, right? We kept a positive mind to the whole thing. We did. It was actually kind of comical because we were like, what is going on with the life right now? <laughs> which brings us to our positive news stories, which we do every Monday and Wednesday here at The Positive Truth. On Fridays, we talk about an issue and how you can change it for the better. So let's get right to it, Tim. And I'm starting it off, right? Yes, sir. Well, how about a 90-year-old great-grandmother that knits hats for a hospital? And she's knitted over 2,100 hats for newborns. That's what she does on her spare time. That is too cute. Man, that's awesome. She's 90 years old? 90. Great-grandma. Basically, you know, when a baby, a newborn is born, they need the hats help because it's crucial that the babies don't lose the heat through their heads. So saving lives, making these kids just a little bit more healthy. And you get to start off fly with a hat, man. Yeah, man, you're absolutely correct, man. That's awesome. That just shows you again, you know, with another story that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always find ways to be positive. Oh, Tim, I don't want to cut you off, but you set me up for my next story. Oh, man, go ahead, do it. All right, so we just talked about a 90-year-old. Let's talk about a 10-year-old. She's in West Sacramento, and she's 10 years old and doesn't have a lot of money, but she started her own ph philanthropy and social experiment, which is called Because I Care Bracelets. So basically what they are is they're a bracelet to encourage people to treat each other with kindness, so whenever you do a nice deed for someone, whether it's paying a compliment or buying a coffee for someone, you pass the bracelet on to someone else. And it's like, I pay, like, hey, I got this because I care bracelet. I'm doing something nice for you. I'm not only going to do something nice for you, I'm going to give you the bracelet. Now you go do something nice for someone else. And it just keeps on going. Man. That's so sweet. And a ten year old a ten year old girl did this? Yeah. She got a Facebook page and it has like forty four thousand likes. Oh man, do you know what the Facebook page is called? Because I care eleven. But here's the thing, you know it's always gonna be spelled weird. B -E oh, yeah. cuz so C U Z I care eleven. So basically just the cuz is spelled wrong. It's C U Z. Gotcha. I just actually searched on a... Facebook as we spoke and I liked it so I'm now following them. <laughs> nice. Legit. Well, let me go ahead and uh, say real quick how awesome that is that the first story is about a 90-year-old woman and the second story was about a 10-year-old girl. That shows you, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can positivity, you can find ways to be positive and help others. I think that's so awesome, especially that because I care story is it's a 10-year-old girl trying to motivate positivity, trying to do exactly what we're trying to do, man. We're on the same team. It's a beautiful circle. No one person can do everything, but everyone can do something. Do sabes. Well, let me go ahead and uh, start off with my story. My story happens to be something that I thought was pretty cool because it's about a man who worked at McDonald's. 
which my first job when I was 16 was McDonald's. Even though I know JP will not touch it, I still love me some McDonald's, man. Hey, man, my first <laughs> job was KFC, so... Fast food restaurants it is. <laughs> well, check this out, man. A McDonald's, a McDonald's employee is being called a hero after he jumped through this restaurant drive through window. So basically, this woman came up and ordered some breakfast for her and two other children that were in the back seat. And Pedro Valoria took her order and was going to hand her her food. He walked away from the window, but when he walked back up, he noticed that the lady was kind of short of breath, like she didn't look too well. Then all of a sudden, she lost consciousness. Her foot slipped off the brake, and her SUV again SUV began to roll down. And immediately, the guy in the drive-thru, his name was Pedro. Pedro turned to hero mode. He literally jumped through the window, takes off to stop the lady, stays with the lady and the kids until the paramedics came to check her out. They revived the woman at the scene, and she was taken to the hospital for additional treatment. What happened to her at the window? She just lost consciousness. She might have been, you know, low sugar, no idea what happened. But uh, she uh, was taken to the hospital. She's okay now, but she was taken to the hospital. And Pedro is seen as a hero by everybody in that restaurant because there was no hesitation whatsoever. Yeah, man. Cars, like, if you take your foot off the brake and it goes idle, those cars can start moving. Man, and it, that's a, an SUV isn't a little SUV. You know, it's not a car. It's not a compact car. An SUV is pretty big, so it can definitely do some damage. Good thing he uh, didn't hesitate, though, because I know plenty of people that would have been like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> On top so, of that, you got to get through the window. I'm not exactly yeah. the fattest person in the world, but I don't know if I could get through that window. <laughs> well, check this out, man. There's actually like a video. I'm going to share it to Facebook. This is probably going to be the only story I do share to Facebook today. But um, you can see the, the guy's name's Pedro, and he's about my size, man. So you can see how he fit through a drive through window, man. <laughs> it's all good, man. Little man problems. Man, think about all these amazing moments we weren't catching on video beforehand. Like, before, like, everyone had a cell phone. <laughs> Man, who would have known about this positivity? No idea. That's why we're doing this podcast, man, to spread it. Tu sabes. Speaking about spreading positivity, let's talk about some CO2 emissions, which isn't exactly positivity, but, but... CO2 emissions from basically energy have remained flat for the third year running. So we are keeping consistently how much CO2 emissions we're getting in the air. Instead of us doing more, we're flattening it out. And hopefully through renewables, less reliance on coal, more energy efficiency, we can drop that number in the near future. Yes. Great steps forward, man. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great positive news story. I definitely need to hear that because we've been doing a lot over global warming and CO2 emissions, man. That's something that we definitely got to monitor. So appreciate you sharing that with us, JP. Anytime. All right, man. My next story goes to everybody that, you know, was celebrating spring break these last couple weeks. Well, there's a group of college students that spent their spring break installing solar panels for low income families. A lot of college students we know, they go to Padre, Mexico, Florida, they go wherever they can to try to party and relieve some stress that they may have had, you know, throughout their, their semester. And um, over 100 students from 15 different universities participated in a solar spring break program. So instead of going to all these party cities and party towns and these beaches, they decided to put in some work. That's only going to help out low-income families. The only benefit that these students got out of it is basically work experience. The experiment, experience. I'm over here saying experiment. You can tell it's late, JP. <laughs> but um, I I actually thought this uh, was pretty awesome. I looked into it just a little bit, and um, just I'm gonna read one of the comments that somebody made. It said, uh, "Solar Spring Break was deeply eye-opening, mind-opening, and heart-opening." Comments: Jasmine Tan and an undergraduate at Duke University said. I felt so much more connected, not only to, only to the solar and sustainability industry, but also to a whole new community and network. I so, thought that was... Go ahead, JP. Hold up. How many kids were doing this on the spring break thing? A little over 100 students. Nice. Yeah, man. It's awesome. It's basically you have all these, all these kids that... Um, can afford to go places and they decided not to they decided to do this program and this program 
they're getting to, to not only do this hard work, but they're getting to meet some of these families and you're getting to see a part of communities that you've never got to see only on TV or through the news. And seeing, we all, we both know part of the reason why we're doing this podcast, seeing it through your own eyes is completely different than what the news portrays. So super awesome for these spring breakers going out there and doing some positivity, positive things out there for the communities. I think that's awesome. And I had to definitely share that. Yeah, that's a great story because, you know, when most people think about spring break, they think about, oh, college kids, they're going to Padre, they're going to get drunk and act a fool. But most college kids don't have that luxury. Most college kids are like us whenever we were in college, Tim. Like, have yeah, a, I got Spring work. break and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I got to catch up on these, uh, get these extra shifts so I can pay these bills and try to get some food in my stomach. Man, while, you ain't lying. Or you're going through finals. And there's this conception of like, spoiled millennials, these college kids, they're not working hard. I'm like, nah, there are a lot of them that are working hard and you just don't see it. And then kids they're actually giving back and doing man that's just awesome it's really beautiful like man story. it's definitely beautiful what else you got for us jp well you remember we talked about the uh, trees a few weeks ago yeah 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 well i got a follow-up nice so they've added a billion trees so well, they're trying to add a billion trees and they've said it They've already reached their goal in Pakistan, so now they're going to try to add three quarters or 750 billion trees more in the next decade. How awesome is that? Oh, hold up. By the end of 2017, so (laughs) not this next decade. I read that wrong. I read 2027, but yeah, by the end of the year, they're going to try to plant 750 million more trees. That's even better. (laughs) That's awesome, man. See, I'm over here. Like, I know I told you the other day, JP, but uh, I'm getting ready to plant a peach tree in my backyard, man. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. It's only one, but this got me motivated to, like, just run through some park or something and drop seeds somewhere. (laughs) Man, that's awesome. We definitely need more trees. Well, I don't have a yard or I would participate. Why did you choose a peach tree again? Man, I like peaches. The wife likes peaches. She ultimately chose the tree, but I'm definitely supporting it, so I'm cool with it. <laughs> I wanted some kind of fruit tree, man. I just didn't know what. That sounds like most healthy relationships. Like, she wanted it, and I was cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Exactly. Tim, do you have any more stories? Yeah, I have one more, man. How All many do right. you have? I got two. You got two? Go ahead and say one, and then I'll get mine, and then you finish it up for us, JP. Well, I read this today. And I think it's kind of crazy. And I don't know if this is like traditional uplifting news story, but I still think it's pretty great. Denmark rid itself of foreign debt for the first time in 183 years. Basically on Monday, they put, they put in a payment of $1.5 billion to finish off a foreign loan. They have none anymore. That's pretty cool. <laughs> No, that's awesome, man. That's that's some positive news. Anybody or any country that can get out of debt, congrats to you. That's super positive. It gives me hope. <laughs> For sure. It's just, what? where do you go to drop off $1.5 billion? <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, I wish I knew how that was, all that stuff worked, but hey. <laughs> like man. When, I, when I deposit two Gs in the account, I'm like, woohoo. <laughs> This is turn up mode right now. Oh man, that's too funny. No, that's awesome though. That was a good positive news story for sure. Shout out to Denmark. Hopefully USA will be joining them sometime before in my lifetime. I was about to say, just hopefully in our lifetime would be nice. Like that would be cool. <laughs> all right, man. Well, let me go ahead and finish this up. JP, when you were a kid, man, well, you got one more after me, but it's all good. When you were a kid, did you ever watch Sem- uh, Sesame Street? Um... I don't really remember. I remember watching, um, who was the blue one with the nose? Blue's Clues? No, 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 no. He's like a blue Sesame Street person, like Gonzo. Oh, yeah, 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 Gonzo. I remember he had a movie, and it was, uh, this was a long time ago. It was on beta. <laughs> Not on VHS, it was on beta. It was like Super Gonzo. He was like a superhero. I remember, like, watching that. I don't ever actually remember watching Sesame Street. Well, you know what Sesame Street is. It's all good. (laughs) Well, check this out. When Sesame Street started and when it began in 1969, it was considered an experiment. 
The question was, could television be used to educate young children? Research has provided that, yes, you can. <laughs> so, that being said, in today's age, today's day and age is 2017, Sesame Street will take on its latest challenge. It will be introducing a Muppet named Julia who has autism. Rather than being treated like an outsider, which is often plight by, of kids with the spectrum, the Mups, the the TV show is basically embracing her. They're teaching not only children, but also adults how to interact with somebody with autism to show that they're not as different as everybody else. I think this is the one of the coolest things ever. I'm not even gonna lie to you, JP, because one in 68 kids have some sort of end of the spectrum when it comes to autism. And for every 68 children born, you're gonna find one with autism. It's about time we had something on TV where these kids know how to interact with a person with autism so it can make everything easier for everybody. Because obviously people are afraid of things they don't know about. And with a show like Sesame Street that's been on since 1969, it could definitely help educate and bring some kind of awareness to America. Is this the first, is this, has there ever been like an autism, like someone that was autistic, like consistently on a television series in like a serious way? Um, honestly, not that I know, man. And I think this is like the best start because I honestly believe, you know, in order to get through people, you have to start with the children. And we all know children watch Sesame Street. Yeah, I can't, I don't watch TV. Basically, unless it's not NBA, I just don't turn it on. But right. I can't think of one television show, show period that has ever had an autistic person consistently as a theme and come to think of it I don't know that much about autism so maybe I need to start watching Sesame Street I'm not even gonna lie to you like I'm actually gonna start paying attention a little bit more have my niece watch it every now and then as well to, to understand it because they all they want to do is promote a better understanding to re reduce the stigma often found around these children and what better way to do it man by having a Muppet. That's so awesome, like, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too, when is this coming out? Um, it's the, All it said was it's coming out soon, so I'm assuming it's gonna be in the next two months, which I'm all for it. That gives me time to plan and figure out when it does come on. <laughs> we, got, we, gotta, we gotta follow up whenever we find out about this. Oh, for sure, we're definitely gonna follow up on this because I definitely wanna see what you guys have to say about it as well. Nice, nice. Well, my last positive news story is about a sponge, Tim. A sponge? Sponges are nasty, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are different kinds of sponges. But yes, my in, bad. in general, sponges are nasty. That is the truth. But what you got for us? What, what is, what is positive you, about this sponge? Do you remember the BP oil spill? I do. Remember how we couldn't clean up the oil out of the ocean? Indeed. So, we have invented a sponge that can take the oil out of water. Really? It's called the Oleo sponge, and I'm, it's not, it's just imagine Oreo, just take out the R and put the L. Uh -huh. So it's made out of a really, it's a polyurethane foam, I probably ruined it. That, that was pretty close, I think, that sounded like, you might have been right, JP. <laughs> And basically what this like sponge does is it works on top of the water and under the water. It's already been tested and it can soak, it can absorb up to 90 times its, 90 times its own weight in oil. Man, that's going to change a lot. That's awesome. So, I mean, it's, it's been tested. They're going through the licensing and all the business agreements. It's going to be in real world use in less than five years. It was tested in a New Jersey saltwater research tank. And basically they said the material is extremely sturdy. It's, they've run every test possible. They just need to get it out there. And so the next time an oil spill happens, we got something to soak it up with. Man, that's awesome. That's like, man, I'm loving these positive news stories today, JP. You brought it today. I'm telling you, man, Google News, check the... Uh, <laughs> Check the, check the science and technology portion. Game changer. I might have to start doing some more uh, science and technology stories for sure to keep up. But yeah, I just thought it was really cool, man. They got the pictures of how it's working. It's, it's crazy. It's like a literal sponge. It just soaks up oil. 
I think that's awesome, man. It looks like it's like brown and black. It's one of those things you wouldn't like. That looks like really bad. If you remember that outside furniture that has like that mesh, like your yeah. grandma would have. That's what it kind of right. looks like. Man, I'm kind of excited to check it out. Like look into it a little bit more for sure. It's called the Oleo Sponge. If you want to check it out at home. We're looking to start our own website, so that's why we haven't really been posting on Facebook as much. And we're trying to promote the YouTube a little bit better. But if you want us to keep posting on the Facebook, let us know, and we'll keep on posting the positive news stories. Yeah, for sure, man. Your feedback is uh, what's going to keep driving us and keep moving us in the right direction. So make sure you guys let us know what you guys want us to hear, what is you guys want us to do, and we'll definitely do our best to get there. What do you so all want we- us to talk about, too? Oh, for sure. So make sure if you guys want to reach us, email us or hit us on hit us up on Facebook. Our Facebook is at the Positive Truth Podcast. Our Twitter is TPT underscore podcast. You can find us on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Whatever you guys want to listen to, whatever you guys want us to talk about, what do you guys want us to do? If you have any ideas, let us know, please, because we're we're brainstorming through a lot right now, and I think we have some new things coming up pretty soon. And hopefully, everybody enjoys them. New things make the visuals a lot better. Tu sabes. Tim, you know what I want from you? What's that, sir? A positive quote. JP, I need you to stall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I got the perfect stalling method. So we've done, last Friday came out, we were doing, we're basically we're covering Mara Cohen's book, 35 Dumb Things Well Intended People Say that widen the diversity gap. So we've covered sayings like, oh, oh, let me find them. Some of my best friends are black, Asian, so-and-so. And we talk about the intent of that, the impact, and why you shouldn't say it, and tell you what you should say instead. So we covered things like, I don't see color, I'm, I'm colorblind. You speak the language very well. Yes, but you're a good one. I never owned slaves. We covered all those topics. Coming up Friday, we're going to cover up the last 15, so we're going to cover things like when white men say we are the ones who are being discriminated against now, or asking a transgender person, what are you really, a man or a woman? We talk about why saying these things hurts, why you shouldn't say them, and what you should say instead. Man. Make sure you guys check out those episodes. That book's pretty awesome, by the way. You guys got to check that out as well. And I'm definitely going to finish up with the positive quote. So are you ready, JP? Always. All right, man. We are all different. Don't judge. Understand instead. Roy T. Bennett. And speaking of we're all different, don't judge. That's what we, co- that's what we covered, man, these last Friday episode. Take that, world. We're out. We all came together. We're out. We hope you have a positive day, positive week. Check us out on Friday, Mondays, and this Wednesday. Tell a friend. All that jazz. Do sabes. Stay positive, people.